Well, good morning, everyone. The hour's upon us, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I'm very excited to see this so well attended. Looking through, I know many of your names, and it's a great opportunity to get together and, and somewhat see your face and connect. Uh, we understand that meetings like this take away from all the things that you're doing throughout the day, and so we want to be respectful of that. We promise to be quick and concise and respectful of your time. My name is uh, Shannon Lazeski. I am the I have the proud privilege of serving as the Director of Procurement and Contracts and the City's Purchasing Agent. And our team has been working over the last several months on some tasks and initiatives that we want to make you aware of and explain how these updates impact you and your company. Topics for discussion today include the 2022 Disparity Study, CWE Program Updates, as well as some others, the revised procurement process for CWE program projects, and our new invitation for bid document, which we really want you to become familiar with. Partnering with us today is another city department, which is no stranger to the construction community, the Office of Business Opportunities, which is led by Aisha Driggers. And uh, we love every opportunity that we get to work alongside that outstanding group. In addition, we have several members from our city's Columbia Water team with us today, which is led by Assistant City Manager Clint Sheely. And uh, thank you so much for your support to being here as well today. So Aisha, I'll hand it over to you. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. We will briefly go over some of the updates and just kind of the discussion about how we came to the decision to make some changes that we hope we will find um, will streamline the process and make it a little bit easier for you to participate in the procurement opportunities. Um, addition, in addition to me, I have Cassandra Fletcher on the call that will um, go over a couple of items that are specific to some of our programs. Next slide. So regarding our disparity study, a couple of years ago, we um, consulted with Keen Consulting to complete the study and they provided nine recommendations for us. Um, we are evaluating ways to implement those recommendations and some of them you will hear about today. They are a direct result of some of the um, feedback we received from the consulting group on how we can better make our um, programming more efficient and more effective for um, our, not only the city, but also the contractors that work on our projects. Um, we're always open for feedback on how we can be more efficient and effective, and we'll continue to monitor our programming to see how, that, how we can um, ensure that we have a good program that's available for our contractors to participate in our city projects. So as a result of that study, we are making updates to our compliance program. And then in addition to that, we're gonna be working very closely with procurement as we always do to look at ways that we can have more targeted outreach for our smaller purchases. Um, we hear our small businesses say they really want to have more opportunities to participate in procurement opportunities. So we're gonna look to see if maybe there's some changes we can make to thresholds or other ways that we can continue to encourage the utilization of our small minority women and veteran owned businesses. Um, so just continue to be on the lookout for changes that may occur there. And we'll definitely share that with you um, as those changes are um, finalized. So one of the recommendations from the disparity study that you will see um, us talk about today is program enhancements. So specifically with our CDBE program, um, we're, they said that we should consider combining the two-step process, procurement process. So you'll hear about that today. Um, some of you will be happy that we are gonna go to back to our one-step process. So hopefully that'll streamline it. We understand there were some concerns about making sure that you had all of your quotes from your subcontractors. So we're hoping that going back to the one-step process, we'll see some benefits from that that will be helpful for you as you respond to solicitations that come out of the city. 
um, offices. Also, the recommendation was that we narrowly tailor the program to a single geographic area. Again, Cassandra is going to talk about this specifically, but really we had a three-tier structure and uh, we're going to go just to the one single geographic area, which is the eight county CSA, um, instead of allowing it to be a statewide option to meet your CDBE requirements. So um, that is another focus of ours is to make sure that you know, our local vendors have the uh, opportunity to participate in the procurement opportunities. Um, they are a priority to us. Um, of course, we know that there are some uh, specialized areas where we might not have local vendors that can provide those resources. So sometimes it is necessary for us to expand our outreach, but definitely there's a priority for our local firms. And now um, Cassandra is gonna talk about some of those program changes specifically. And um, I think at the end of Cassandra's, we may be able to stop and ask if there are any specific questions on those before we move on to um, the procurement updates. All right, thank you, Aisha. Um, good morning again, my name is Cassandra Fletcher. I'm the Compliance Administrator with the Office of Business Opportunities. And we greatly appreciate you all taking out the time to be in attendance today um, as well. And by all means, like Aisha indicated, once I cover the information, we would entertain any questions that you have at that time. Um, I'm gonna start off with just um, pretty much is going over the purpose of the CDBE program, which is to ensure that CDBEs have an equitable opportunity to compete for subcontracts with the city of Columbia. So that's very important to us in the Office of Business Opportunity as well as the city of Columbia. Next slide. Um, the CDBE, uh, pretty much I'm just gonna define what a CDBE is which is a certified socially and or economically disadvantaged business enterprise, DBE, that has an office located within the Columbia, Orangeburg, Newberry combined statistical area CSA at a minimum of one year. And the counties that actually include our CSA is Saluda, Kershaw, Calhoun, Orangeburg, Fairfield, Richland, Lexington, as well as Newberry County. And by all means, if you are interested in becoming a CDBE or if you know someone who's interested in becoming a CDBE, CDBE please, please, please um, reach out to us. You can pretty much give us a call at 803-545-3950, or you can just send us an email at obocompliance at columbiasc.gov. And also our CDBE application is located on our website at obo.columbiasc.gov forward slash WP. Content Uploads 2023 CDBE Application Form Fillable 0727-2023. Or you can just simply, again, just send us an email and we, by all means, will be more than happy to just afford that application out to you. So one-page application that you would um, fill out and um, just, uh, just attach the support and documentation with that application as well. Um, in regards to the upcoming um, changes in regards to the CDB program guidelines, the first thing is um, the CDB goal affidavit. It was previously known as a CDB le letter of CDBE commitment. And on this particular form, you're going to outline the um, intention as far as whether or not, as far as the offer, whether or not you're going to exceed or meet the CDB goal percentage or whether or not you're going to secure 50% or more of the CDBE goal percentage, or if you're gonna secure less than the CDBE goal percentage, at this point, you would actually have to submit, submit good faith documentation as well, along with your CDBE goal affidavit. And the second portion is that by all means, we definitely want to ensure that the CDBE or the DBE is gonna perform at least 50% um, of their portion, a minimum of 50% of the portion on this particular um, project as well. And this is a picture of the CDBE um, goal affidavit. Um, and this is just indicating what I just previously just covered in regards to you actually, in, the, in regards to the intention of you actually meeting the CDBE goal, meeting at least 50% of the CDBE goal, or meeting less than 50%. And if you're gonna be meeting less than 50% of the CDBE goal, then good faith effort documentation is required at that time as well. And also the subcontractor has to self-perform a minimum of 50% of the portion of the project as well. This particular area, I'm believing that you all will be very excited about based upon the 
feedback that we've asked and received. And by all means, like Aisha indicated, we, we do appreciate all the feedback that we receive and we do hear your feedback. And I know that's how we're going to be able to actually improve our programs based upon the feedback that um, we receive from you all. So we greatly do um, appreciate the feedback. And based upon your feedback, we actually made one of the upcoming um, changes to the guidelines. But the first thing is the CDB goal percentage can only be met by using CDBEs and DBE subcontractors located in the CSA, the combined statistical area. And also an offeror who is a CDBE or DBE will count 20% towards the overall CDB goal requirement placed on the project. Now, this change actually took place due to the feedback that we actually received from you all. So if you're a prime contractor that's actually working on a CDBE project, 20% um, can actually be counted towards the C counted towards the prime contractor that's the CDBE that's on that project. And also, Aisha mentioned earlier, due to the disparity study, based upon the recommendation that we received from the disparity study, we will no longer be utilizing a three tier approach um, for utilization of CDBEs or DBEs. What we're actually just wanting to ensure that you're all are actually looking for DDB DBEs as well as CDBEs that's located in the combined statistical area. Um, and also, I just wanted to point out the importance of the Form 100 and what our role is in regards to the Form 100 as far as OBO. And what we actually do is we're going to monitor that pay application throughout the entire contract to ensure that the CWE goal is maintained during the duration of the contract. And the offeror must attach a monthly subcontract and report using the Form 100 with all pay applications submitted with the City of Columbia. And when we're looking at the Form 100, as far as um, looking at the information on it, what we actually look is to see whether or not the name of the subcontractors are work working on the project listed on that Form 100. Also, we're looking to see if the vendor number is listed, the subcontractor amount, email address, race, as well as gender, and the amount paid to the subcontractor. It's very important that that information is listed on the Form 100 because we actually compare what's on the Form 100 to the BIR to ensure that the amount that's been approved for those subcontractors is actually being paid to the subcontractors. And we, we can't actually sign off on it until we actually see that those Form 100s um, is actually correct based upon the amount that's been approved to be paid to that subcontractor. So that's the reason why we look at it very heavily so we can ensure that our subcontractors are being paid based upon the amount that's actually been approved that they, they've indicated um, as far as the prime contract on that BIR. Next slide. Um, this is the Form 100. This is the form that I just brief, briefly just went over, just letting you know what information has to be on that Form 100 in order for us to be able to sign off on it. And at this point, we will entertain any questions that you all have regarding the information that I just covered. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, my name is Ebony Sullivan. I'm with Cassie Electric. We're a subcontractor, but we're headquartered down in the Greenville area. For this certification in those counties that you mentioned, if I don't live or have an office in any of those areas, I don't need to complete this application for CDBE? Right. With, um, with the CDBE, you would actually have to be located within those counties that I pretty much just indicated. Gotcha. But I will add that does not mean you can't participate on procurement opportunities that come out of the city. So there's definitely still opportunities for you, but just as it uh, as, as it applies to the CDBE, that's for those in the eight counties. Okay, thank you. And I did see there was a question about putting some of those links in the chat, and those have been added to the chat. Um, in addition, we will also have a copy of the presentation on our website. And then once the recording is um, ready, we'll also add that to our website. And that link will be at the end of the presentation. So you will have access to this information after our meeting today. Were there any other questions for Cassandra or I before our procurement begins? I'm sorry, you were breaking up. Uh, I was just asking if there were any additional questions for yeah. yeah. Good morning. Good morning, Aisha. This is Lucinta. How are you? Great. Thank you. 
Um, quick question. Um, once we like, it's time for me to renew my applications, my certifications. Um, what's typically the turnaround time? Like once we submit our, um, you know, the applications, how long is it taking y'all to get us an approval? Three business days. Oh, wow. That's, that's great. <laughs> okay. And hey, Cassandra, I <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you. And that's for all the certifications, not just the CB, um, CDBE, but also the um, LB as well. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's wonderful. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I do have a question. This is Casey Davis, um, Connect Staffing Agency. Um, I filled my application out a while back, uh, July, I think, last year. Who do I contact about uh, my application? You can give me a call or send me um, an email. Or do you have a pen and piece of paper handy so you can take it? I on? do. Yes, okay. ma'am. It's 803-545-4185. Okay, thank you. All right. Well, definitely, if you think of any additional questions, we'll have another opportunity for you to ask those um, after procurement um, shares their information. All right. Well, I guess that brings up me. Um, first, let me introduce myself. I, my name is Gary Porth. I know many of the people on the call. Uh, I see names anyhow and a few faces. Um, but those of you that don't know me, I'm the construction procurement manager for the city of Columbia. And I will be happy to, uh, one thing I just realized, we don't have contact information in the slides, but I'll be happy to share my contact information with anyone. Um, and, and I'm sure my colleagues would as well. And maybe we can put it in the chat. So if anyone needs to has a question, I'll ask for questions when I finish my short presentation. And then if anyone has any other questions or needs to contact me, you can certainly email me or give me a phone call. But I'll give you that when we finish up and uh, try to maybe see if we can get everyone's contact information in, or at least from the different departments we have here in procurement. Um, I want to talk a little bit. I, I, first off, let me say thank you all for joining us this morning. Um, I know this is um, taking time out of your day, and we really, really apologize for that. But we felt we, we're really excited about these changes uh, that Aisha and Cassandra have just mentioned about the, the changes we've got coming to the CDBE process and going to a one-step uh, CDBE um, bid process. Um, that can take a lot of headaches out of it, as I see it, and I think and hope that you um, contractors will feel the same way. Uh, heretofore, in the last several years, what we've been doing is you have to submit your CSP CDB affidavit indicating what, which, you know, what part of the goal you're going to meet. And then a month later, you put your bid in. Well, a lot can happen in a month, as you bidders know. I mean, you know, I know because uh, I've been there. When you're putting a bid together, I um, mean, it's hectic the morning if the bid's due at 10 o'clock. At 9.30, you're still trying to get prices from subcontractors. And, and this is something that you would have had to indicate a month before, you know, who those subcontractors are going to be. And you don't know because they won't give you their prices up until right to before the time of the bid. And many times, many of those subs are giving prices to multiple primes. So this is going to really, um, I think, take a lot of headaches out of it for you all. You're going to get, uh, you know, be able to submit everything at one time. I'm going to show you a little bit about how we plan to do that. There'll be some changes from how we did it before, but I think it's good and I'm excited about it. I hope you all will be too. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. This is just an overview of the one-step CDB process. And the, the three items that I'm more concerned about talking to you all about. Again, if you see step one is the CDB goals established, you all have nothing to do with that. That's done through a, a formula and a methodology that our Office of Business Opportunities uses to go through and establish what the goal for the project will be. And then we'll get to a situation where the bid is then put together and then issued on eBid, our online bidding website. And that includes what the goal is. And then the next three steps, and if you go to the next slide, we've kind of got those highlighted in red. Um, these are the ones that I think concern you all most. The pre-bid meeting is held once the bid is issued. We've got the date for the pre-bid meeting. And then we'll have a questions deadline. 
Uh, and then once the question deadline passes, and I think you all know this won't change, we get all the questions in and the question deadline passes, we'll then get the answers to those questions. We'll formulate those into an addendum and then we'll post that addendum back onto the website for the benefit of all who might be interested in the project. So we wanna make sure we've got everything as clear as we can and, and everybody's got access to all that, all that information. Once those questions and answers are posted, then it'll be another short period. At least, um, we give at least three days, but I like to, you know, generally we schedule a week or two after that when the bid opening will actually occur to give you time to incorporate any of those answers or questions that were asked and then incorporate those answers into your, your process of going through getting your prices ready to, to give us a bid. Once the bid opening is held, and, and this is the, the, the new way of the CDBE, uh, this is the, the changes, but again, as I see them as very positive, and I hope you all will, will join me in and welcome in this as well. We're gonna ask you to separate into three separate files the things that you submit electronically on bid day. And the first file is gonna be your CDBE program information. That's gonna be your CDBE goal affidavit that Cassandra talked about earlier. This is the same document basically that went into two-step process that we're currently using. We call it a, a CDB, CDBE CSP, which stands for Compliance Submittal Period Goal Affidavit. And you basically gonna indicate on that goal affidavit, again, one of three things, you're either gonna meet the goal, let's just say the goal is 10%, you indicate you're gonna meet the goal, you're either gonna meet at least half of the goal, which would be 5% or more, or you're gonna meet less than half of the goal, which in this case would be 4.99% or less. If you indicate that third category that you're gonna meet less than half of the goal, you will be required to submit good faith efforts along with your bid. Uh, if you're going to meet at least half of the goal or meet the goal, Good faith efforts are not required to be submitted. However, and I get uh, Cassandra or Aisha to correct me on this if I'm wrong, my understanding is that you still have to do good faith efforts unless you're gonna meet the goal. You just don't have to turn them in if you're gonna indicate that you're gonna meet at least half of the goal. But you have to keep those good faith efforts on file for a period of three years and they're subject to being called by the city. So that's to make sure that you do the good faith efforts in an effort to try to, uh, to meet that goal. Uh, again, at CDB goal affidavit and the good faith efforts, if applicable, again, if you're going to meet less than half the goal, that's one file. The second file will be your procurement information. And we initially had the bid form included with the procurement information, but we're working on some changes that, that I'll tell you a little bit more about and Kent can elaborate a little more on when he tells you about our new IFB template. Um, and we're trying to make the bid form a little bit more easy for you all. Where we, we basically we're going to make it. Our goal is to make it where we can do it like an Excel with fillable areas that you can fill it in, and it will automatically compute because we'll have the formulas in it. So that's why we separated that into a third file. But the second file, procurement information is everything else besides the CDB um, affidavit and good faith efforts if required. And then the procurement information again, the bid amount, your bid bond, the business information record form. Your, um, and all that information, uh, along with the bidder acknowledgement, prime business information statement, non-collusion affidavit, your LBE qualifications, if applicable, affirmative action utilization goals, labor surplus utilization plan, conflict of interest statement, and your contractor's license. And then again, those will be submitted, and they will be they won't be open. They won't be unsealed at the day of bid opening. That and your bid form, the third file, which is going to be your bid form, which has the line items and all your extended prices and then your sum, which is your total bid amount. Those will not be unsealed at the time of bid opening. What we'll do is we'll open the bid and we'll look at first the CDB information. And in the past, one of the problems we had with the two-step because you submitted the CSB CDB affidavit a month before your bid opening, you might indicate that you're gonna meet at least half of the goal. Let's just say use again 10% as a CDB goal. And let's just say you indicated on that CSB affidavit, you're gonna meet half of the goal, which is 5%. It comes around to bid day a month later when you're trying to secure prices from those subcontractors 
and one of the subcontractors that you were counting on, or maybe two or three or more, has suddenly decided that they've got some other work and they can't give you, they can't commit to you, they can't do what they had committed to you earlier and, and participate in this project. So you're scrambling around trying to find other DBEs and or CDBEs going through the three-tiered approach, which those of you who went through it knows that's an effort in itself trying to, to achieve your goal. And bottom line is you can't find enough to achieve that 5% that you said you were going to do. So you submit your business information record and all that stuff with your bid, and you're only indicating 3% CDB participation. Um, that, again, was a problem. And we'd have to go through that and try to see what we could do to rectify it. With the new one-step process, you're going to be submitting your CSP affidavit along with your bid, your BIR form, all at the same time. So there's no reason that those shouldn't matter. You know, you know what contractors you've got, what subcontractors, you know whether they're CDBs, DBEs, or whatever, and you can indicate that amount in your, your CDB affidavit, and then you're also going to indicate that same amount in your BIR form. So again, you're submitting it all at the same time, so it makes it a lot easier to make sure that they match. And then once we get the, the again, the bids open, let's just say it opens at 10 o'clock on February the 5th. When we open the bids, and we're going to also go to opening bids, we've been doing them by conference call, but we're going to move to the modern world. We're going to start opening bids by Zoom. So you all will be able to participate, and we'll also can share our screen, and you can see the bid tabulation as posted when we do that. But let me back up. If it's a CDBE project, we're not going to put prices out there because we're not going to know those at the, at the time we open the bid. We'll get the CDB affidavit and any supporting uh, good faith efforts documentation. We'll submit those to our Office of Business Opportunities, and thereby we'll be holding on to the, all the other information, which would be the second file and the third file, your bid form and all of your procurement information. We won't open any of that. We won't unseal it until we receive word back from our Office of Business Opportunities that one of two things, if you've indicated you're gonna meet the goal or meet at least half of the goal, I think it's pretty well received that the uh, Office of Business Opportunities is gonna go ahead and say, yes, you can open the bids from those bidders. If you've indicated you're gonna meet less than half of the goal and you submitted good faith efforts, OBO is going to then have to go through the good faith efforts, convene a good faith efforts committee and determine whether or not you have done sufficient good faith efforts to grant basically, and we used to call it a waiver, to go ahead and move forward in the bidding process. And we will have to wait on that information and, and OBO has pledged to us that they're gonna do it as quickly as possible when that bid is open. So hopefully by that same day, hopefully within an hour or two, or definitely by the close of business on the day of the bid opening, we will then be able to post the bid tabulation. Again, we will open all of the bids that are submitted. At that time, we receive word from Office of Business Opportunities that the bidder has either been deemed compliant, and I'm not sure about the if I'm using the proper terminology, Aisha, Cassandra, you can correct me on that, or if a bidder who submitted good faith efforts has, has submitted sufficient good faith efforts to be granted a waiver to move them forward, and then we'll open their bid. If by chance a bidder has indicated they're going to submit, they're going to achieve less than half of the goal, and they submitted good faith efforts, and and Office of Business Opportunities determines that the good faith efforts that are submitted are not sufficient. In other words, that bidder didn't do everything that they were. It's a checklist that you can go through. You all are probably familiar with that. If not, we can help you with that. Aisha knows can help you with it. Make sure that you've done everything you can to try to secure. CDBEs and or DBEs from the eight county CSA. And then if they determine that you have not done sufficient efforts to do that, then they will rule you non-compliant and then we will not unseal your bid. We will determine you non-responsive and we will not unseal your actual bid information. So that pretty well sums it up. But uh, again, I and my staff, we're very, very excited about this new process. And I really feel like it's gonna be well received in the bidding community too. It, it, I can't imagine it not being, it's gonna be a much simpler process. It's gonna make things move much quicker. I, the only drawback uh, as I see it is, you know, when you when you put a bid in on a project, when bids are open, if it's 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. or 11 a.m., when bids are open, you, you wanna know what your bid is. You wanna know where you stand, you know, was I low? Uh, because as you well know, in government bidding, this is how it works, low bid wins. 
Uh, and you won't be able to see that with the immediacy that, that, that we want, but it's going to be very, very quick and as quick as we can possibly make it as soon as OBO can get through that, uh, waiting through the, um, the CDB uh, information to submit it. And like I said, we're pledging to do it within the hour or two or at least by the close of business on that day to post a bid tabulation for all of you to see. I will also um, entertain any questions before we move on to, to Kent. He's going to tell you a little bit more about our new um, bid uh, form template. That's really uh, uh, IFB template, excuse me. We're really, really excited about that too. I'm, I'm probably as just as excited, if not more excited about that as I am about the one-step CDBE process. And I think you all will be as well. It's really uh, exciting. I think we're finally moving forward into some taking advantage of some of the technology that, that we've been afforded. And, and I think it's going to make it a much simpler process. So I'll hush and, and ask if anybody's got any questions. Yeah, good morning, Gary. Um, thank you for that. This is Lucenta Lewis Ellis with LLE Construction Group. Yeah. Um, I was just curious too, um, for as far as the scope of work when it comes to the construction projects that'll be listed, Will y'all also consider um, facility-based projects like any, um, I do see you have some renovation stuff out there, which is great. Uh, will you also start having other facility type projects or is that something that the city will do in-house? And Lucetta, I'm not sure if I understand your question when you say for other facility-based projects. Um, right. Um, like upgrades to, like, say, for instance, you have a city um, ran building and you want to go in and get rid of all your T8, T12 bulbs and put in LEDs and you do a whole building wide upgrade or or maybe um, HVAC uh, replacement projects or anything that's considered more maintenance um, facility type instead of renovations. Um, will you also start having more of those type projects um I'm just curious and, and I, a great question and I, I don't know if i can fully answer that but i you know when i think i realize the distinction you're talking about now more maintenance type stuff than actual renovations and i think that's probably what you're asking i i, I really can't say that we would I and mean, the city has a support services division as you probably well know most of you do who handles a lot of our maintenance. Now, we do have maintenance projects that are outside of their abilities, I guess. We, we may be short-staffed. And, and those kinds of things, I think the city certainly can bid any of that kind of work out. Now, as to whether or not you'll see more of that coming uh, out to the bidding community, I, I really can't answer if that that's going to be the case or not. But we do do, obviously, and you mentioned renovations, we do a lot of that already. Uh, where we take a building and repurpose it, if you will. We're actually doing some renovations now on a building down at uh, 1401 Main Street, the project that's ongoing right now that the city is working on. So, Yeah, and I'll okay, add, Lucinta, you. Can you, Lucinta, can you send us a copy of your um, capability statement with the list of um, the type of work that you do? And we can share yeah. that with support services. Okay. So is there something we're not aware of that they handle internally just on their level? And we can give your contact information and there there might be some opportunities where they can reach out to you directly depending on the size of their needs. Okay. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you, Aisha. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Lucetta. Anybody else have any other questions? Um, Mr. Gary, we also have a um a question and I'll chat from Mr. B Bill Edmonds. Okay. I'm looking in the chat here now to see if I can see it. I believe, let's see. I saw Mr. Edmonds on here earlier. I see it. Let me see if I can read the question. I said, uh, the prime contractor, we would like to work with CDB organizations shortly prior to the bidding phase. This would assist us in developing CDB partnerships and scopes of work to meet the goals. Is it possible to do a workshop prior to the bidding phase with CDBEs and review drawings so CDB subcontract opportunities are known and these partnerships can be developed. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, we currently, as you all probably, those of you who bid on our CDB projects, what we generally do when we have a pre-bid meeting on that same day, Office of Business Opportunities has what they call an outreach event and it's generally scheduled like an hour after our pre-bid meeting. 
And I would, again, I'll depend, uh, lean on Aisha and Cassandra and, and, and Latanya knows to help me along, but I would, assumptions as my wife told me though, they get you in trouble, but I would assume that we're gonna probably continue to do that same thing um, and have an outreach event on the same day that we have the pre-bid meeting. Now, if there's something different or something I'm missing, Aisha and Cassandra, if y'all would let me know. But I, 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 I can hear, I uh, kind of detect in Mr. Edmonds' question if we could do more. And and I'm all for that. And I know Aisha and Cassandra knows would be more than willing. I think the problem, or at least this is my observation, is that we have those outreach events. And I say we have them. Actually, the Office of Business Opportunities conducts those events. And they're usually not very well attended. And, and Aisha and Cassandra, y'all correct me if I'm wrong. We would love to have more CDBs and more primes to attend those events to try to try to facilitate those relationships. I think that that you know, Mr. Evans, you're, you're talking about there. That's that's exactly what we're trying to hit on. Um, and and I'll use this opportunity. You know, CDBs, MPPs, all those things, and local business preference programs and things that the city has. You know, we're all in this together, and we are a, a public entity. And, and and we're just trying to fulfill council city council's mission of involving these um these disadvantaged business enterprises and in, in the work that we do to give them that opportunity and and that really benefits us all when we can help to grow those businesses into ideally just like the MPP program mentor protege program it's designed to break those mentor, those proteges to bring on a new young upcoming contractor. And I've heard it said before from mentors, said, you mean I'm training my competition? And they kind of laugh. And, you know, really, that's what they're doing. Um, but we all know, and if you sit back and reflect, competition is good for you. Uh, it's good for a contractor. It's good for any, I don't care what kind of business it is. If you've got competition, it makes you do a better job because you you, you no, no, no longer can charge what you want because somebody's nipping at your heels making you make sure that you've got all your I's dotted and your T's crossed and that you're doing a good job. So we're trying to promote that competition. We're also trying to fulfill, we paid a, you know, a, a pretty good sum to get that diversity study done and use the, the, you know, the resources we have with Keen. And they came in and told us you know, where we were lacking. And that's one of the things we're trying to do. And, and, and what they found, and, and Aisha knows, correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, we're really lacking in, in, you know, providing opportunities for women-owned businesses and, and African-American-owned businesses. And that's what we want to try to do because we feel like that when we do that, provide these opportunities and can share the spread the wealth, if you will, it's only help those businesses grow. When we get those businesses grow, it provides additional tax revenues for us as they get out and do more work and get bigger and all that. And it's just a cycle that continues to grow. And that's why we're excited about all this. And we just... We we want we want to be positive about it. We want you all to, to get on board with us and be a partner with us. And that's that's really one of our big goals today is too. And, and we really feel good about our contracted community. And we want to continue the relationships that we have, and we want to grow those relationships. So, um, hope I answered your question. But I I should hope we, we will continue to do those outreach events. I'm sure, and when we have a CDB project, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And it did say, Bill did say his audio isn't working, but that was a correct interpretation of what he was asking. And we'll continue to try to look for opportunities to kind of bring in the different contractors and network together and, and share their offerings with each other. So um, thank you for suggesting that. And then Karen also had a suggestion that we'll probably have to take offline, um, Gary and Shannon, to look at how we do the bid openings and um, to see if there's an opportunity to um, schedule them about two hours apart so that contractors really could see what their um, the pricing is. So, so Karen, we'll we'll look at that and see what opportunities exist for something like that. Hi guys, and I do see the care, the question from Karen too. So we'll we'll look at that too. Any other questions? If not, um, I, I'm going to put my. Contact information. I'm gonna put it in the chat right quick. And and if anybody else from from government contracts wants to do that, I hope you you can do that as well. I just thought I'd bet it because I told you I was gonna give you my contact. If anybody's got any questions after the fact, most of you or those of you who know me, you know, got my number and stuff, and I, I'll take a call anytime or you can email me. But I'll put my phone number and my email address in the in the chat. All right. 
Thank you all. Well, good morning all. And my name is Kent Davis. I'm the procurement manager for the professional services side of things here at the city and Department of Procurements and Contracts. And we have uh, taken on trying to make our templates all around more uh, concise and similar throughout the different uh, teams that we have here. And so we've got a new template that we are working on that will be coming out very shortly. We're wrapping up some additional documentation that's going to go with it so that uh, as we uh, as we unleash it, it's going to all look very consistent and very much the same. And uh, we, but we're excited for what these updates will look like. The big key is that we're trying to make it more concise and easier for you all to find information as well as the information that you send back to us when you submit your bids. So at a glance, you can see here we've worked to eliminate some of the duplication of information that we had previously with our our old template. The bid opening now, as Gary indicated, is going to be uh, held virtually via Zoom. We are incorporating hyperlinks where, for the pertinent information so that you always have access to the most updated information and forms, wherever that may be. We're also including check boxes for specific areas which apply. So if the, the solicitation will always look the same and then it'll just be a matter of identifying the check box for which category would apply. The OBO compliance and funding programs, we've changed that to be labeled as a procurement or programmatic provisions. Also, we are, uh, going to insert some new requirements uh, on a very short basis, but we're going to include some qualifications and past performances within your response. At times, we may request financial responsibility, and then we've added appendices and exhibits. So we're going to walk through some of these, all of these areas a little bit to just show you what they might look like or what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish. And, and uh, then uh, hopefully in the very near future, uh, we can roll this out to you and uh, it'll be a much more concise program for you. So we're going to start with a sneak peek on, on the template here. So one of the things you'll notice is at the very front end of the document, we're going to have the schedule of events all listed up front, and it's only going to be listed in this table. And so throughout the solicitation, we won't include any dates. We're going to only say as noted within either the schedule of events or as noted. So you can see the key dates here. Uh, if it's not going to be within the, the solicitation, we'll just have a non-applicable. And so we'll have that non-mandatory pre-bid meetings, the man non-mandatory site visit, the OBO outreach meeting there, and then the last day to submit questions and the bid opening date. So that's what this schedule looks like. So as I noted that there's going to be some, the programmatic provisions is a new piece that uh, is going to determine which OBO compliance programs apply to the solicitation. More than one box may be checked. So as you look through this, we've got a statement saying that whatever boxes are checked, those are the ones which apply. And right here, we're showing the LBE and the MPP and the CDBE. And so you'll see that the checkbox will indicate if that program is included within the solicitation. And then we also are including the hyperlinks. So if there are required forms that are going to be needed to be submitted, you will need to go ahead and get those from, in this case, OBO's website. And those will all be listed in those specific programs on their website. So it should be very slick and easy for you to find the information you need. And when you see down there in the CDBE, we also will in, in, indicate what the goal is. We've got it highlighted there. Uh, so you'll look through there and see what that goal is going to be for that, I have that bid. We've also are updating the scope of scope of work that's going to be how that looks in the document. And one of the areas that we're updating, and it's going to be very concise and all in one area, is the bonding and liquidated damages section. Each, each one that applies again will have that checkbox. And then the percentage that is going to be applicable to this to that specific bid will also apply. One of the things we are working on, we'll talk a bit a little bit later, is breaking out the payment and performance bond to two separate bonds. And so we'll we'll talk dis discuss that just a bit at the end. And then under the liquidated damages, you're going to also see what the liquidated damages, if they apply, what that amount is on a per day basis. Next, we talked, I spoke a little bit earlier about adding a few requirements that are going to be going. This is something that's a little different for you all, uh, for, for the city at least. I know uh, other entities utilize this as well. We're going to include include some mandatory requirements, being experience and qualifications and a technical competence. So you want to make sure you're reading through this and identify what we're looking for in terms of past experience or your qualifications and then also past performance. 
we're going to be including a reference question, uh, a reference document for you to provide references for a specific number of references for a specific number of years. So you want to make sure you have that included in your upload as well, which we're going to walk through at the end is when we look at the appendices. Financial stability. So this is something that we will incorporate either we're going to request, uh, once again, you get the checkbox, you're going to have uh, either, we're going to request that you submit your finances, audited finances for a specific period. Generally speaking, we use three years. And if we do require that, we're going to also ask you to name the file specifically there as stated uh, under the, in that red text and the highlight. So we want you to name the file and that would actually be uploaded separately specifically and noted that it's confidential. Or we're going to have a second box that notes that there aren't going to be any financial statements required. However, the city does uh, have the ability to request those at any time if we should need to. The upload. So we're transitioning how things are uploaded and how the document looks. So you're going to have several attachments within the up the actual bid that we post. And what you'll see here is you've got appendices and exhibits, and you will just look which ones are checked. So that's going to apply to that IFB or that, that bid document. And the appendices are the documents that you're going to need to complete and return. So you will complete your qualifications, your references, what have you. You're going to put all that together as a packet, and you're going to send that as one attachment. And you can see here we've listed some of the appendices. We have gone through and are adjusting what we require in terms of uh, documents coming back, and we've tried to consolidate some of the forms that you previously used to submit. We've got a few new forms that you will find, one of them being the reference form, one of them also being the litigation claim in history. Our goal is to make sure that those forms are very quick and easy to complete and attach and send back. So uh, while we're adding a form, we got rid of more than we added. Let's look at it that way. And then the exhibits, these are just going to be incorporated as items that you're going to need. Uh, and this will be attached to the actual IFB document itself. So when it is uploaded, you're going to see three attachments from the city. You'll see the actual bid document. You're going to see the appendices separate, and then you'll see the bid form as well. So some of the contract document updates. We're also working on consolidating and making our contract documents concise as well. And what you might find is that uh, we're considering incorporation of the uh, we'll just say EJCDC, because the other one's a mouthful, uh, their standard contract and uh, standardizing that to the city, as well as I indicated, we're breaking out the payment of performance bond to be separate. So they will be 100% uh, payment, 100% performance bond, or whatever that percentage is noted. And those are also documents that we are looking to utilize from EJCDC. The miscellaneous updates, I walked through a little bit about the document and the bid upload, and you'll, you'll see it... Uh, the document should be shorter, we'll get more concise, and then we'll have the instructions for that upload. One new thing is part of what's come out of the disparity study as well is we are gonna require all subcontractors have a city vendor number. And there is no cost to do that. And uh, so when you submit that business information record for your subcontractors, you're gonna make you're gonna have to include that vendor number. It will be required at award. We may hold the award if that's not, uh, not accomplished when we when we go to award the, the bid. So you want to make sure that's all in place. It's a very easy process to get the vendor number. So you want to make sure your subcontractors have done that when you submit your response. And then no bid surveys. We're going to move to find out. We want to find out how we can make sure we're, we're attracting the most opportunities for our, our contracting community. So those who attend the bid or the pre-bid if you don't submit a response, we're going to ask you to just give us a quick survey as to why you didn't submit a response. We just want to make sure we're make, uh, doing everything we can on our end to make uh, the city a, a place, a choice of destination. And we've got a question here. Is there a database spreadsheet of current vendor numbers? That will have to get back to you. So we can look them up individually. I don't know if there's a data... Uh, I'm sure we can pull some kind of report as well. So we don't currently have a spreadsheet listed like on a website or anything at that point for now. But um, if you do call us, if you're working with a sub and you want to make sure they're included on your business information record and you just really don't know if there's already a vendor number set up, please call us because we may have that information already. 
um, before just asking them to go ahead and submit their paperwork for W-9 and the new vendor form. Great question, thank you. And another good question, how do you apply for vendor numbers? So simply we have a new vendor registration form. We're gonna ask for a copy of their, uh, the most recent W-9. You will submit that to the procurements and contracts department. We will get that loaded and then they'll our data analyst will send that back to the subcontractor with their vendor number. Our vendor numbers required for material suppliers also. That would be a yes. So this is definitely a little bit of a change. And so, you know, as we said, it's, it's stemmed from the disparity study. It, it's gonna allow the city to continue to uh, understand and analyze and see what kind of subcontracting participation we're having. And uh, so we, we appreciate everybody's assistance on, on helping us work through that. Those are the only, uh, those are the updates we have for the new document. As we said, we're excited to see it uh, when, when we roll this out, that it should be a little bit more concise and the information, we're only asked for the information once and in one place. And like I said, it'll look a little different. So take some time getting used to that first one. And uh, I think you'll see throughout all of our, our teams that uh, moving forward, going on, to, that you'll start to see some similarities between whether it be a bid or an RFP or rest, request for qualifications, but we're transitioning to that, uh, to a cons you know, consistent look throughout the team in the department. And Jewel Buff, the data analyst for the department, has also provided her contact information as well. And I can do that as well here at the end here. I'll put my contact information in the chat. Do we have any other questions? Well, we thank you for your time on, on and allowing me to, to walk you through that. And I'm going to turn it back over to Shannon. Well, great. Well, thanks everyone. I know uh, this this really has kind of incorporated several elements of the things we do on a daily basis here. Um, we want to make sure that it is streamlined and as easy, simple um, process to where it's just not as much time necessary on your end to get those bids in. So we really want to encourage all the bidding possible we really want to encourage uh, teaming wherever possible and uh, definitely supporting the, the efforts that we need for our 2022 disparity study. So um, thank you for letting us lead you through that. Um, I'll just pause, I guess, for one more moment if there's any other questions that someone's burning to ask. If not, you do have the information down at the on this slide that uh, tells you how to get to us. Uh, that is our main email address and phone number, but um, each person is also putting their direct line in the chat as well, if that's helpful. Any other comments or questions? Thank you all for um, hosting this event. We appreciate it. Thank you, Lucinta. Um, I hope that um, this is just the start of um, maybe some others to come. Uh, we, we won't try to bombard and have these that frequently, but we will definitely put something together if we have um, a fair amount of content to present and, and get out to the public quickly. Um, that's what we would like to utilize this platform for. And we'll try to keep it very short um, and specific on specific topics. We do have a copy of the presentation, a link to that here, and uh, we will drop in the chat our survey. So if you wouldn't mind um, also just answering just a couple questions for us, um, some of which is involves if you're wanting to get in, in contact with us one-on-one, -on -one, we're, we're certainly open to doing that as well. Yeah, I'll add, I just want to thank everyone for the interaction. It's always helpful when we can get feedback. We know that there's not just one way to accomplish the goals that we have at the city. So we encourage you just to continue to communicate with us and um, identify areas where there's possible improvements. And if we can implement those, we will absolutely do that. But um, 
a defined effective date for these changes is the most recent question. So for, for CDBE, that'll be within the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so by mid-February, and, and I'll let Procurement answer about the um, yeah. updates. We have a target date of February 15th. So as uh, new IFBs are released in our eBid system, um, the new template, the IFB template, you will see that as of February the 15th. And, and I, one I would, step, that will be part of it too. And I would encourage you, if you're not a CDBE and you want to go ahead and get that um, designation, go ahead and submit that paperwork to us now. Although it only takes three days, it's better just to go ahead and get it done before a solicitation comes out that has that requirement. Um, same for vendor numbers. Even if there's not, you don't have an active project, you need to just go ahead and request that vendor number ahead of time so that you're not rushing at the last minute. And um, we're always open to answer questions. I, we, I always have to say if it's an active solicitation, send those questions to procurement. If it's just a, a broad question about our programming, our office will be happy to help you with that. Um, we work very, very closely with procurement, and I think that's that's how we'll continue to see success is that it's like we have that partnership together. So um, someone asked about solicitations. I'm sure we can drop in the Ion Wave um, link for someone to see active solicitations and I know you don't have to be registered to see them, um, but to, to respond, you do. But procurement can talk about that. Yes, um, I can answer that, too, while we put the actual address in the chat. Um, if you go to our city's website, ColumbiaSC.gov, um, there is a dashboard up at the top, and it has a um, an opportunity where it says services. Procurement and contracts is one of those choices when you do the drop down and it will take you straight to our eBid Columbia C e-procurement site. So that's a, a handy way, very quick way of getting to um, where you can view all of that information. And, and Aisha's right, you do not have to have um, a subscription or account already in there just to view the information. Of course, if you want to submit for one of the solicitation opportunities, you do have to be registered. And to register is a blue box. I think it says supplier registration. Um, if you just click on that box, it'll take you to the registration page for a vendor. Um, and, and again, as Shannon said, you can view um, solicitations uh, without being registered. Here it is right there. It says supply registration, that blue box on the right. If you click on that, and it's a very short registration process where you put in information about your company and then submit that. And then someone from the city will take a look at it and make sure you've got everything in and you'll be notified back usually within that day that you are now uh, a registered supplier and you will have a username and password and be able to log in. Two things you can't do without being registered. You can't ask a question on the solicitation, nor can you submit a, a proposal or a bid on the solicitation unless you're registered. You can view them without being registered, but you can't submit a question and you can't put a bid in without being registered. But like Shannon said, if you're thinking about it, if you're not registered, it doesn't cost you anything to register. Uh, it's a pretty simple, painless process to go through. So I would urge you to get registered and then what will happen is once you register, based on what um, you put in as the kind of work or service that your business uh, provides, you will then be notified anytime a solicitation goes out that, that touches on that kind of service or that kind of goods that you start, that you actually provide. So it's a good thing. That that's one of the ways that you can be notified about a solicitation when it goes out. Great. I, I want to say too, while I had the floor, and I like to talk a lot, y'all. Those of my colleagues all know that, and those of you in the contractor community that know me, I talk way too much. My wife sits by me sometimes and steps on my foot or punches me in the side. But I just want to tell you all how much I appreciate you joining us today. Uh, we are very excited. If you couldn't tell about these changes that are coming, uh, it's going to be it's going to be good for us, and it's going to be good for you all as well. I think you're going to love it. 
Um, it's going to make it a whole lot um, less cumbersome to have to put a bid in. Um, it's going to be a whole lot easier. It's going to be a little adjustment to get, you know, when we get first, first started to get used to it. But it's it's really simple. Um, and I think in the coming world, the way things are today, you're going to find it very, very easy, too. You're going to really like it. And, and, and I think it's going to make things better for all of us. I appreciate y'all's time. I know you've got a lot to do. And I really, really appreciate you all joining us today. Call us with any questions. I think we did have another comment about um, having virtual events. And they are virtual, um, Christina. So definitely contact our office so we can make sure you're aware when we hold those virtual outreach meetings. Because um, you're right. We understand that it's hard for you, for you to get away from your job site. So we appreciate that. And definitely we utilize the technology we have to have virtual meetings or hybrid um, for those that want to be in person that we do offer um, virtual as an option. So we appreciate that. And Aisha, can I step in real quick yeah. here to, to affirm that the bid document will also include the OBO uh, meeting and the Zoom link for that as well. So you'll see that as you, once you open up the original doc, the, the document, you scroll down and, and you'll have that information as well. Okay. Well, thanks, everyone. Hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday. Thank you.